Hi kids, welcome to I Love Toy Trains All Aboard. My name's Jeff, haven't seen you for a while, but guess what, we have another great show for you. We'll visit the Big Rock Candy Mountain, get spooked on Halloween, see a giant Lego layout, look out, UFOs flying over Area 51. You'll see the largest outdoor G-scale layout in America, and a lot more, plus new songs by my pal James Coffey. We have a lot to do, so let's get started. As always, we open with a song. The sun is up and the day is new, the weather's clear and the sky is blue. Let's take a ride on down the trail, traveling on that big steel rail. Throttle back and the boiler stoke, the sky above is filled with smoke. Let's journey far in a railroad car and see what's down the line. All aboard, it's time to get all aboard. Clack as we travel down that railroad track The world outside are passing by As we speed along on those railroad ties The future lies just up ahead A station house and a flagman shed The whistle blows and the headlamp glows Sit back and enjoy the ride All aboard It's time to get all aboard All aboard It's time to get all aboard Right. Ghost galore and skeletons are on their way this night It's such a scary scene as they gather on Halloween Traveling on that midnight train tonight Halloween train, such a scary sight Halloween train, how we do the night Halloween train, will give you such a fright wow. on Halloween <laughs> Ghouls and goblins and spiders everywhere Gathered all together to give you such a scare Under a harvest moon, bats and flying booms <laughs> Screams and laughter fill the cool night air Halloween train, such a fairy sight Halloween train, how we through the night Halloween train, will give you <laughs> such a fright on Halloween A haunting sound as you see smoke and steam When the moon is full it shakes your soul to witness such a scene Through the howling rain they ride upon that train To dance away the night on Halloween Halloween train, such a scary sight Halloween train, howling through the night Halloween train, will give you such a fright on Halloween By the mid-1960s, the Japanese already had high-speed bullet trains that reached speeds of almost 200 miles per hour. 
Passenger service was fading fast in America, as most people traveled by air or by car on a government-financed interstate highway system. The railroads were desperate to come up with something that would recapture the public's fancy. American railroads were under pressure to catch up, so the New York Central decided to strap a pair of surplus B-36 bomber jet engines onto the roof of a bud car. The front of the car was restyled with a dramatic streamlined cowl painted black. Dubbed the Black Beetle with the code name M497, the jet-powered rail car was an attempt by the New York Central to keep up with the Joneses, or in this case, the Japanese. In July of 1966, the twin-engine, jet-powered M497 raced between Butler, Indiana and Stryker, Ohio, hitting a top speed of just under 184 miles per hour. That set a new American speed record for light rail trains that still stands today. But it was just an experiment. High speed trains on America's existing track system was just not a very good idea. The M497 was dismantled and returned to regular service. The jet engines were recycled too. They found new life on the New York Central's jet-powered snowblower cars. This is the control tower at Area 51 reporting in. We are located 83 miles north-northwest of Las Vegas, Nevada on the southern shore of Groom Lake. Everything is calm, the night is clear, nothing on the radar, another very quiet night. Wait a minute, I hear something. Holy cow, I see something, a UFO. It looks like a flying saucer. Code red, code red, status, high alert, high alert, status, high alert. Now there's more of them. Maybe six or seven. They're zooming all over the place. Still nothing on the radar. They're small, circular aircraft that can make sharp turns at high speed. Look out! Man, one just buzzed my tower. Scramble our jets. So hold your fire. They may be peaceful. Our jets are reporting visual contact, but nothing on their radar either. This is Flyboy number one, an SR-71 Yellowbird. I have visual contact with the UFO, flying side by side. We are maintaining identical air speeds at Mach 3.30. Operator of UFO is greenish in color, wearing no helmet. Seems to be smiling at me. Now he just waved. Looks like he has six fingers. Whoa, he just made a 90 degree turn and has disappeared. My jet can't do that. How can he do that? Two UFOs just landed. Aliens are getting out. They're unloading something, a large box that is glowing. Wait, they just fell down. They're lying on the ground, passed out. Must be our atmosphere. Calling Groom Lake Mining Company. We need the Groom Lake Mining Train over to Area 51 soon as possible. I mean right now. This is Sam in the Groom Lake Mining Train. Read you loud and clear. I'm on my way. Lots of strange things going on tonight. What's happening? We have UFO sightings. Two landed and the aliens passed out. 
We need you to take the aliens, their spaceships, and the strange-looking glowing box to our secret lab where our ace scientists will examine everything. This is Sam calling Control Central. Arrived Area 51, waiting for instructions. Load those aliens in our special outer space air-conditioned control car. Load the UFOs on a flat car. And load whatever that glowing material is in a box car. Take everything over to our super secret mountain laboratory. Alert our scientists, we have two aliens, two UFOs, and some glowing stuff to be examined. I'm notifying the president right now. Remember, hush, hush, top secret information. This is Sam and the Groom Lake Mining Train. Hope those guys don't know where our secret laboratory is. Over and out. Send to the president with highest priority rating for his eyes only. Over and out. Whoa! We all know about O-Gage trains because that's what we feature in our I Love Toy Trains videos. There are also HO trains which are half the size of O-Gage. In fact, HO stands for half O. We also have played with standard gauge trains, but we have spent very little time with G-Scale trains. G-Scale is approximately one half inch to the foot or about twice the size of O-Gage trains, which are a quarter inch to the foot. One of the cool things about G-Scale is they can run outdoors. Bad weather doesn't seem to bother them. Last time I was in California, I ran into a G-Scale layout at the Living Desert Park in Palm Desert, California. Palm Desert is right next to Palm Springs. The Living Desert layout is outside and it is big. I mean really big. It fills about an acre of land. There are six different loops. The largest is over 900 feet long. Total track laid, over 3,000 feet. That's more than a half a mile of toy train track. The main line travels through Old Indio, past the Grand Canyon, and alongside the mining and logging areas. The Living Desert Railroad features the world's longest wooden G-scale trestle. The trestle measures 202 feet and 8 inches long. It's that long for a reason. The trestle allows the trains to negotiate the drop of almost two feet between the upper and lower portions of the layout. The grade is 1%, one inch up for every 100 inches of length. 1% is a negotiable grade for real railroads too. The trestle is constructed of redwood and all the joints are glued and stapled. All layout builders try their best to make their mountains, foliage, and water look real. There are all kinds of products aimed at making realistic scenery. But do you know the best way to make mountains, foliage, and water look real? Use real mountains, foliage, and water. That's the big advantage of an outdoor railroad. The scenery looks real because it is, not to mention a real blue sky and a nice natural progression from day to night. No timer needed. Each night the trains go to the workshop where they are checked over, cleaned, oiled, and made ready for running the next day. Say hello to my pal Ralph. He's working on an engine right now. The trains operate on up to 18 volts of DC. The electricity goes through the rails is picked up by the wheels of the locomotive and onto the motors. The larger locomotives have two motors, while the smaller ones have only one. 
The amount of electricity used for one train is about the same as a 25 watt light bulb. Historic scenes along the main line include Mount Rushmore, a mission in Santa Barbara, dwellings of the Pueblo people, and Indian teepees. If you've been to the Grand Canyon, you've probably seen the El Tovar Hotel. This layout has a scale model of that famous hotel. The old Indio train station, located in Indio, California, depicts the early days of railroading from about 1875 to the mid-1950s. Here's a model of a small town from the 1950s. Hey, time out for a quick quiz. Who are the four presidents carved on the side of Mount Rushmore? Take one more look. If you said George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln, you get an A. And where is Mount Rushmore? Right, South Dakota, you get an A+. Railroads played a big part in the development of the United States. Abraham Lincoln, by the way, was the president who got the Central Pacific Railroad and the Union Pacific Railroad to join their rails at Promontory Point, Utah on July 8, 1862. That was a great day in American history. On that day, our country's first transcontinental railroad was established. Even today, just about everything we touch has at one time or another been carried by a train. The Living Desert layout started in 1998. At first, it was intended to only be a temporary part of a Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday program. But the trains proved so popular, they decided to run the trains whenever the park was open. The layout was built by a hearty group of volunteers who love trains and model railroading and who are thrilled to be part of this ongoing railroad extravaganza. Future plans include more landscaping and a sprinkler system that will support the live plants and also control dust and erosion. I guess erosion is one problem you inside railroad guys don't have. The railroad is run by one full-time Living Desert staff member and a crew of 25 volunteers. The railroad runs seven days a week, with at least seven trains running continuously. There's always something new being planned for the railroad. So next time you're in Palm Desert, California, make sure you stop by the Living Desert Railroad. The train is just part of the many attractions at the Living Desert. Alongside the layout are many animal exhibits and a botanical garden that will take your breath away. Gotta go now, they just said I could run the trains. This is Charlie, the engineer of the 5433 New York Central Steam Locomotive, calling Henry in the caboose. We're all set to go, are you all set? This is Henry in the caboose, all set back here. Let's go for a ride. Boy, this is great, isn't it, Henry? Traveling down the railroad track, watching the world go by. Nothing finer than riding down a train. Yes, I agree, Charlie. Nothing finer than going for a train ride. Only one thing, Charlie. I'm still sitting here. You forgot to couple me to your train. Oh, no. How could I forget my caboose? I'll back right up, Henry, and get you coupled.
That's better. Now let's really go for a ride on a train. On a train Through the hills And rolling plains Hear the whistle sound As we go from town to town Let's take a ride On a train Let's take a ride On a train Through winter snow And summer rain Feel the heat Pass by And the mountains rising high Let's take a ride This is the control tower at the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Big Dave on duty. Attention everyone. Sammy Sweet Tooth, the engineer on the candy train, is arriving on track five. He has lots of cars to load. And Sammy is already behind schedule. So we'll have to hurry. Everybody ready? Let's go. Okay, Charlie. Dump the Reese's Pieces. Unload those gumballs. Dump the M&M's. Dump the gumdrops. Hey boys, the idea is to get the candy in the trucks, not scattered all over. Welcome, Sammy. We're all ready for you. Hey, Big Dave. I've been highballing it for two days to get to the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Halloween is in a couple of weeks, and I've got lots of candy to deliver. So let's make it snappy. Got you covered, Sammy. You'll be loaded before you can eat a box full of M&M's. Big Dave, you know what the Butterfinger Bar said to the Clark Bar? No, Sammy. What did the Butterfinger Bar say to the Clark Bar? You're so sweet. <laughs> oh. Know why the cookie looks sad? No. Why did the cookie look sad? He was feeling crummy. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, knock knock. Who's there? Ada. Ada who? Ada whole Tootsie Roll and I'm still hungry. <laughs> okay, smarty pants. I got one for you. I'm thinking of a candy bar in the sky. Which candy bar am I thinking of? 
Hmm, let's see. Starbursts? Well, that's close, but I'm thinking of a Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> cookie, cookie, cookie. Hey, Sammy, you know what a leopard's favorite candy is? No? What is a leopard's favorite candy? Dots. And speaking of dots, come on, boys, let's get those dots loaded. Sammy's anxious to get highballing on the rails again. Good job, Sammy Sweet Tooth. You're all loaded and ready to go. Thanks, Big Dave. I'll see you next week for another load. Can't wait. You're my favorite stop. You know something, Sammy? Even if I have to put up with your corny jokes, I still enjoy your visit to our Big Rock Candy Mountain. Late one night, I dreamt a sight of a place so nice and dandy. I dreamt of sweets and peppermint treats and a place all made of candy. Where every child had a great big smile and his own little soda fountain. It was so grand, a magical land called the Big Rock Candy Mountain. In the Big Rock Candy Mountain, a land that's full of treats. Where you'll never get a tummy ache, no matter what you eat. Licorice sticks as big as trees, M&Ms as big as rocks. Candy piles stretch out for miles, bringing all the kids a great big smile in the Big Rock Candy Mountain. is fun to eat, but don't eat too much, and don't forget to brush your teeth after. Hey, wait a minute, what's the noise? Oh no, the twin cranes are fighting again over a Snickers container. Now stop that fighting right now, you know better than that. You can both have a Snickers bar after we get all the candy loaded, if you promise to be good. The Great Pacific Railway from California hail. Bring on the locomotive, lay down the island rail. Across the rolling prairies, by steam we're bound to go. The railroad cars are coming, humming through New Mexico. The railroad cars are coming, humming through New Mexico. This Lego layout was built by Scott Sanburn of Warsaw, Indiana. Scott has been playing with Lego since he was four years old. He's always loved trains, so it figures that Scott would eventually get involved with Lego trains. I would say Scott has gotten involved with Lego trains in a big way. Check out this layout Scott built, all from Lego blocks.
Some of the trains he's running today include a BNSF freight train. a European type electric, a Norfolk and Southern diesel, a Santa Fe F unit, and the legendary Norfolk and Western J. Here's the kind of train we need in America, a sleek state-of-the-art high-speed train. Some of Scott's freight car rolling stock include a coil car, hopper, Conrail bay window caboose, intermodal cars, and gondolas filled with soccer balls. There's a Harry Potter train and a Christmas train, which is Scott's favorite. These trains are from Lego kits, but Scott also builds custom locomotives from scratch. Scott grew up in Flint, Michigan. He used to see a Grand Trunk Western GP38 and a Grand Trunk Switcher pass through town, so he made models of each. He also made a model of an Amtrak passenger train. Scott gets a big kick out of people's reactions, especially the kids. Folks just can't believe he built all this. The layout measures 20 by 20 feet. There are two loops that go around the entire layout so at least two trains can run at one time. Scott can even run two trains on each loop, but he has to be careful to keep them separated. All streamlined room at train number 32 Leaving on track number four. There's a freight yard, a passenger yard, a downtown with a hotel and shopping area, and a suburban area where the folks who ride the trains and do the shopping live. Everything you see is made from Lego blocks. The streets, sidewalks, the people, even the flowers. Lego trains and track are made of plastic, which doesn't conduct electricity. But each has thin strips of metal, which do conduct the electricity. So electricity goes from the regulator, or transformer, to the wheels of the locomotive. There's also a carnival with a merry-go-round. A movie theater. A seaport with intermodal barges. And a farm with cows. Glad to see Scott is helping the environment by using this giant fan to generate electricity. Wouldn't it be great if he could run his layout with wind energy? Every town needs a fire department. The fire brigade model, which Scott expanded from the original design, took 20 hours to build. Another model that Scott expanded on and made bigger is the Grand Emporium. That's the neat thing about Lego. You can build what they suggest, or you can come up with your own ideas and make totally original designs. Same with the trains.
got trains on my brain And when I hear that whistle blow When I see that headlight glow My palms begin to sweat My heart pounds And when I hear that clickety-clack And see that smoke coming out the stack My head begins to spin around and round I got trains on my brain Smoke and fire in my veins I got trains on the brain As soon as I am out of bed There's trains are chugging through my head I hear the clanging bells and sound of steam And when it's getting dark outside, I go to bed and close my eyes and see those locomotives in my dreams. Well, I got trains on my brain, smoke and fire in my veins. Why it is, I can't explain, but I got trains on my brain. Well, I got trains on my brain. Well, I got trains on my brain. Aren't you in the wrong video? Oh no!